for as long as I can remember, I've attempted often to try to pay attention to the process by which I fall asleep at night, or sometimes during the day when I'm having a nap. It's not an easy thing to do, um, but it seems to follow in as much as I'm capable of recalling any of it. Um, on most occasions, a set pattern. My mind sort of falls into a well-worn furrow of, uh, of an illustrated series of thoughts. Something very mundane like walking down the street or um, talking to somebody that I know. Um, something like that. And it all seems so absurdly familiar that it just seems like a nice way for my thoughts to go and they just sort of go that way of their own accord. But soon after this taking place, a really strange experience happens where the mind, as it were, starts to branch off suddenly in an infinite of different directions. And it breaks up. I won't say that it dissolves, but it breaks into an infinite number of separate pieces. Each one of my um, each one of my thoughts still taking place, but in a multitude of different ways, and it isn't, as I say, a sense of dissolution, as it is a sense of shattering. But the shattering always takes place after something has happened that has suppressed any sense of strangeness at this shattering happening, this fragmentation of my mind. Sometimes, it, it seems that usually sleep follows this fragmentation, but sometimes I can catch myself prior to falling asleep and sort of say, what was that, what was that? No matter how often I manage to catch myself right after this fragmentation has started, I can never remember what it was actually like. I can remember that it had happened and that some sort of fragmentation had taken place. Some sort of, it's almost like a, a, a what had been a large mirror had been broken up into a whole bunch of pieces. Um, that this had taken place and that it's, at some point I had been conscious of my thoughts going this way. Um, but I'm conscious of the fact that I can't draw that very recent, or it seems very recent, experience back into my mind again. Even though it just happened. It just happened. And I can get a sense in terms of this illustration of a, of a fragmenting mirror or a fragmenting bunch of TV screens or something. I can't go back. I can't rewind just a split second. Now, we all sleep, most of us. Do we understand what that is? I don't really mean being asleep or, you know, uh, just what dreamless sleep is like or what having a dream is, but this business of going from the one state to the next. Um, <clears throat> and in particular, with regards to memory. Why can't I remember something that happens so often that it should be ridiculously familiar to, to me, but and yet it is, it is still an unknown? And not only that, I can't remember it even after I come out of it a few, like a split second after it's happened. I can't remember it. Um, I have vague intuitions as to what has happened, but I can't quite put my finger on it. As I say, I can remember this fragmentation and I remember, I can remember that it was, it was just now it was vivid, but the vividness is gone. And I'm looking backwards into something that I can, that, that is a complete blank to me. I can't remember what it was. I can't remember what the experience was of being in that state, but I have flashes of what it was like. Now, the reason why this is so interesting to me is it goes to the very heart of what memory is in particular in terms of being unconscious, in terms of consciousness itself. A lot of people have said that if you're under a general an anesthetic and you don't have any um, recollection of what it was like, in other words, no 
uh, time passing or anything like that. I've actually had that happen once. When I was 14, I had five teeth extracted. I was put under a general anesthetic, and it felt like I went, <laughs> and suddenly my mouth was full of cotton uh, uh, wadding, and uh, I just had no, like I just blinked my eyes, and, and it, it was over with. Was it really like that? Do I really, did, did I really not have the, um, any sense of the passage of time while it was happening, or did I, I won't say did I forget what it was like, but was it something that, like this mirror shattering that happens to me every night when I close my eyes to sleep, was it something that is so different from my waking state that I have no way of summoning it back up, even though it just happened? It was a state of consciousness that is so different from my present state of consciousness that I no longer have the points of reference with which to even engage my memory on something that I almost certainly do remember. It's a state that I was in that was totally alien to my present state, which I believe that I go into every time that I fall asleep at night. I go into a state where my mind goes in very, very strange, very alien directions before settling into something somewhat more familiar, i.e. sleep. The act of falling asleep is, to me, a bigger mystery than being asleep because it's the hardest to figure out. It's the hardest to, to put your finger on, but it happens so often that it should be very familiar to me. So if I have the if I don't have the capacity to put my finger on that even though I know that it does happen all the time perhaps consciousness is not even um contingent upon um what we would normally call consciousness maybe you don't have to be conscious in order to have consciousness you can be unconscious and still be conscious, but the type of consciousness that you do have is so different from, say, the way I am right now or the way we are normally when we're awake that we don't have the capacity to remember it. So not an easy thing to um, to explain. And I think that of almost 500 videos I've done, this is probably the one that I, I'm almost certain to find the least satisfactory because it's the hardest to actually elucidate what I'm what I'm attempting to get across but I'm just trying to get into this this idea of unconsciousness dreamless sleep say or general anesthetic general general anesthesia are we truly unconscious at that point or has our consciousness been dislocated to the point where it's just no longer comprehensible to our conscious selves. It's something that I think bears thinking about because it seems to go to the very heart of what we actually are and what consciousness is. Thank you.